Katrina, if you're like me, um, sketching a roof on a tablet is one of the easiest things to do because it's very tactile. You get to actually use your hands with multiple gestures uh, to sketch out all of the different lines that make up the roof. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to show you how to do today. So when you first get into the sketch screen and you have your primary image, it's going to be in the pan and zoom mode. Well, I'm going to change it by tapping over here on this draw button and then when I put my finger on the screen it's going to show me a cursor. So let's talk about this cursor for a second. You'll see that there are tails that travel vertically and horizontally mm -hmm. and that's going to kind of help you keep your lines nice and straight and kind of show you where your points are uh, with respect to other points. Great. Settings of course, let's hop in there. We are going to be able to adjust a few settings for that cursor specifically the cursor offset. So if you're a lefty, you might want to make that cursor number a positive. Mm -hmm. I've got mine at negative 80, maybe you need yours at plus 80 for left-handed. So you would just slide that cursor over and then all the way back up at the top, tap on the save button. Gotcha. While we're in here, I want to point out this snap to tolerance. Yeah, what's that mean? Well, we're going to be talking about 90 mode here in just a few seconds and setting that tolerance is how much magnetic attraction the line that you draw is going to have to other points. Huh. And I'd like to point out that I'm going to start at a snap to tolerance of 10. Let's go ahead and save that. What I'd like to do is typically draw the second story section of the roof first. Okay. Now you can draw these lines in any order. You don't have to do the perimeter first, but some people will draw all the way around the perimeter. It just depends, you know, what feels right to you as you're sketching out the roof. But what I've done is I've started in that upper left hand corner. With my thumb, you'll notice I had tapped on the screen to get that line going. Mm -hmm. Once I get to the end of where that line's gonna stop, which is gonna be here where this hip meets this tiny little ridge, I'm gonna tap on the screen again. That sets that line point, and then I can imme immediately daisy chain my next line off of that point. And I notice you're not taking your right finger, your right drawing finger off of the screen. No, if I lift it, and let me just show you, if I lift it and then put my finger back on the screen, that line drops away. Gotcha. Now, in order to draw this next line most accurately, I'm going to come up here and tap on this little 90 mode icon. Okay. That's going to turn yellow. Now, when I place my cursor on the end of that first line, it's going to be a big red circle. Tap on the screen with another finger. I use my thumb on my opposite hand. And now with 90 mode turned on, it's going to make that cursor jump and become perfectly horizontal in line with the start of that first line over here on the left side. That's wonderful. Once I get to exactly where I want to place the end of that line, I'll just tap on the screen again. And like before, daisy chain the start of that next line. Now I typically draw my lines right through the center of the gutters. Here you'll see I've come up with a hip and you know what, I don't want to connect to that other point, I want to draw in that little ridge that connects the two. Gotcha. Now I'll lift my finger to start a new line at this point and just come here at that hip and come down the other hip and 90 mode is just, just magnetically attaching to that point that lines up here and also lines up here. And when you're drawing you can, you can feel it. You can, yeah, yeah, you can almost feel the point just sort of snap right to where it needs to go. That's great. Um, once I've connected there, of course, you see that it turned into a big red circle and then I can connect that next line, which is the eave edge across the back. Tap and then lift my finger, put my cursor back on the screen and we can draw a new line from anywhere. The last line of the second story is going to be this eave across the bottom. So I place my cursor on the starting point, it turns into a big red circle. Mm -hmm. I come across the eave and I look for it again to turn into a big red circle. Now I've got those four sections drawn. I do recommend as you draw to occasionally switch over to facets mode. This is going to begin to highlight completed sections in blue. Also placing that 0, 12 value because we'll have to set the pitch later on. Mm -hmm. Default of course is going to be 0 until we decide what the pitch is. Gotcha. Now I'm going to switch back over to pan and zoom and I'm going to zoom in on the next section, this first story section that I'm going to start drawing. I also recommend when you're doing fine tune drawing, like I'm going to be drawing basically this ridge line that comes over, but it's going to have a slight overhang here. Mm -hmm. Well, in order to draw lines that are much closer together, it may be a good idea for me now to go into the settings, 
and change my tolerance down to five. Gotcha. That weakens that magnetic attraction a little bit, but allows me to draw lines much more closely together. Now, even at this point, because of the fact that it wants to connect over to that point where the, where the hips meet the ridge, uh -huh. I will turn 90 mode off just to start this line. With 90 mode off, it's gonna let me set my line to start exactly in the middle of that ridge. And as I'm drawing, I can turn 90 mode right back on. That's wonderful. When I get to the end of this line, notice that it's telling me the length of the line right up here. When I hit where that eave is, it's 26.1 feet. And I actually wanna account for about a foot of overhang. So let's go to 27.1 feet. Tap on the screen, draw down what will be the step wall. Here we have roughly the center of the gutter. So we'll tap and then come across. Tap on the screen again. I haven't picked up my drawing finger the whole time. Mm -hmm. And then connect where that rake meets the ridge. Don't want to draw all the way across and do two rakes at the same time because we won't have closed in those facets correctly. Gotcha. Want to stop and divide our lines to make it one rake and then a second line to make the second rake. And that way we can tell how many lineal feet one rake is going to be and the other rake is going to be, right? Absolutely, such that they should be relatively the same on most of your gable ends. Great. Now, center of the gutter, I tap, and I'm always looking at these cursor tails to make sure that I am lined up. Here, this is a rake edge, so I don't want to be in the center. I want to be on the very right side of it. And then I come down to the bottom, tap on the screen again, come over, again, the left side of that white space to make sure I'm on the very outer edge of the roof plane, mm -hmm. keeping my cursor tails nice and straight with the image underneath. And here, same thing as before. When I hit that eave edge at 2.6 feet, well, that's not where I want to be. I bumped the screen there, oh. so I want to show you the undo button here real quick. This line that I drew is going to be incorrect now, so it's a good idea for me to go up and hit the undo button. That's going to undo that last line. I could hit the undo button multiple times and undo a bunch of lines all at the same time. Gotcha. But in this case, I just need the one. So let me start from where I left off. Big red circle, tap on the screen, come up to 3.6 feet. There we go. And then tap on the screen and come over. And with 90 mode on, it's going to line up right with that step wall above. Great. Tap on the screen again and come all the way up and just look for that big red circle. Oh, and I did it again. But that's okay, because there's another way to, to delete a line. And that's I right. feel like this is the important time to show you. If you've got a line that you drew 15 lines ago. And you don't want to erase half your drawing, Yeah, right? you don't want to hit the undo button, or you don't want to start over. Just switch into edges mode. And when you're in edges mode, you can delete all the lines at one time. But in this particular case, we're just going to press and hold on that line, and it's going to give us this dialog to delete the edge. Right. Tap on that, and now the line is gone. Easy. Navigate right back to the draw mode, start where we left off, come up to the top, tap to close in that last facet, switch over to pan and zoom, bring it back to center, and then go into facets mode one more time just to make sure that everything is shaded in blue. And notice double shading where any roof plane overlaps another roof plane. Great. Yep, and that will detail out your overhangs particularly. Wonderful. Uh, and that's what it takes to draw all the line edges of the roof. Mm -hmm.